for me. Right. She gave me the mindset to be me. And that's crazy, man. It's like uh, there's a dude named Nuri Mohammed. Mm -hmm. I wish I had my phone, man. You could hear what this dude said about relationships. It's the coldest thing. He said, other than your relationship with God, who you choose to spend the rest of your life with is the single most important decision you will ever make. Because your other half will either, will either, uh, uh, your other half will be your better half or make you half of what you could be. Wow. She will either inspire you to greatness or reduce you to mediocrity. He's, and then he went on to talk about, he quoted uh, Minister Louis Farrakhan, and then at the end of it he said, so choose wisely. And that was the first time man, that I ever chose wisely. And it, it was the best thing, because a, a woman like an elevator button, man, ain't take you up or down. If you get the right one, you got something. If you get the wrong one, but it's like a man to a woman. If you get the right man, you can go somewhere. If you get the wrong man, you are. Like I heard you say one time, when I was laughing so hard, you said you paid for a divorce. Yeah. I said, this dude right here was committed. But see, I don't want people to say, she was getting into a divorce already. I I didn't break the whole world. No, I don't do you know, Because you know how people take it to work Yeah. She was getting a divorce and you had the money. Right. Right. What's wrong with that? Right. I'm trying to invest in my future. Right. See, these dudes kill me. That's what's wrong with this generation today. These young boys today, what do she bring to the table? The hell you mean, man? What do your ass bring to the table? You got a woman that can come to the table that can make another you. What else you need to slide up to the table with? What about your job? What happened to men who were supposed to be responsible? Do you know that it's our job to take care of a woman and some children to have a family? That's our damn job. But what happens to the, when the woman say, I don't need a man? This is so ugly for my wife, man. And see, this is what I've never done before. It's been so ugly for my wife. And I've stood there trying not to say nothing. But I'm not a blog. We, me, Shirley, Carla, Tommy, Mississippi Junior, we ain't a blog. We're a real media platform. And I don't know if you all know what it's like to wake up every morning that we get up. And our job and mission is to brighten no day. And it don't matter how dark our day is. Here's the deal. I'm going to tell you something. I'm going to do a list of facts. My wife asked me not to do it. Because she said, Steve, all them haters going to do is flip anything you say in reverse. Okay, cool. Well, you're doing it anyway. And y'all, they're just lying about my girl. And you got her this, and you tearing away at her character. And I don't like what you're doing for me. I don't like the timing of the jailhouse house release because it just seemed like it added more and it came from the inside. I'm tired, but she got to be tired. The woman I married is a good woman. She the best thing ever happened to me. She's God here. She's loyal. She's faithful. And she's a kind and loving person. I don't care what nobody says. And y'all quit talking about she was in my other marriage and ruined it. She did. She was nowhere around that. My marriage, I got divorced in 2005. My marriage was over when the Kings of Comedy was out. Y'all ain't know that because people. It was over then. It wasn't worth a quarter then. It took us this long to get to the divorce. That's when the, that's when the uh, official paperwork came out. But in 2005, let me hear you to something. I had nothing. I lost the radio show we were on in LA on March 23rd, and I lost the only TV show I had, May 10th. I mean, May, 20, May 23rd, I lost the radio show, and May 10th, I lost the TV show. He hardly had no money. Got with Marjorie again, uh, New Year's Eve, met her, talked to her. She was with her kids in Hawaii. We got together in 2006. We had nothing. She didn't, she didn't, she didn't marry into no bad lap of riches. I had nothing. When I asked her to marry me at the end of 2006, and, I, and then she said she wanted to get married in 2007, I told her too soon, I, I got to get some stuff together. She said, what? I said, baby, I ain't really got that. I'm trying to build. She said, I'm going to get in there and build with you. We got married in 2007. 
Do you know what I was doing in 2007? Nothing. We had four. We had four stations in 2005. Four. We built this. All of us built this. We had four stations. We turned this into something. But that woman got down in that foxhole with me and turned this into something. In 2007, we got married. In 2008, we found out that somebody had stolen seven years of my tax return. I ain't gonna mention no name. And we owed the government $22 million of the year debt. But then guess what? She stayed with me in that. Then guess what? In 2009, I got family feud. In 2009, the book came out. In 2012, the talk show came out. I'm telling you, this woman got in a hole and built this with me. She didn't steal nothing. And I'm tired of y'all talking about my girl. Because my girl is one of the best women I've ever met. And why you black ass people out there got these dogs like you just gonna destroy somebody? I don't really know what that's about. But don't worry about it because it ain't working. Because all we are now, we are a tighter to him. Thank you for doing that. And you're not gonna split us up. And we're not going nowhere. And she is none of what she said she is. And she the best chick I know. Now I'm defending her. And you can feel how you want to feel about that. But let me, that's the God in you. But now let's let me give you one piece of seed heart. I see you. Uh uh. Uh uh. Because these, these are just people now yesterday I made a video on this on this whole situation su situation um, another ATS BS video but in that one I was talking about briefly Steve and then I moved on to the situation with Tyrese y'all let me know if you want me to do a separate video concerning the Tyrese DJ Envy situation now here I decided to do a little little more digging get the receipts from his, steve's own audio and this is me talking as a grown man yeah i've been around long as steve i don't have his money i don't have his fame but sometimes these ordinary regular folk can see stuff that these people in the upper echelon don't see and this is what he doesn't see. And you know what I hear in both um, the Shannon Sharp um, and in the recent radio video talking about defending his wife? I hear an old school cat. And I also hear one emotion. I hear desperation. Now, whether that's why i always say alleged but let's assume these things some of these stories if not all are true i hear a man desperate to not only hang on to this woman i hear a man that's desperate to defend this relationship because yeah you could say he's in love with that woman but i think he's desperate to defend this relationship because I think he knows deep down at least some of what's being said is the truth. He knows down deep it's true. And it's funny how, and it's probably been building with him for years, it's funny how he picks now to say something. When none of this stuff is new. He, this has been said for years around you know of course the stuff about marjorie sleeping with the bodyguard and possibly um being impregnated by by him and Lori harvey is the daughter of that of that um is the daughter of that union of that alleged union and let me not say union because it's not confirmed but this is a guy that's angry and that's deep down he's desperate that's what i hear a lot of desperation i hear this from guys all the time desperate to defend their relationship that they know is messed up they know it's messed up i hear this heck even i've done that 
in my younger years. I did that when I knew the relationship was no good. And as far as, you know, she got in the foxhole and helped and help me build this. Yet earlier, you was talking about, oh, a woman don't need to come with thing. It's the man's responsibility. And let's give credit where credit's due, Steve. You built the brand along with people that knew what they were doing. A lot of it, you already had the pieces together before Marjorie, before her. You was already a big name before her. You said she helped you build, yet, I mean, you bothered to run your mouth about this. You might as well put out the receipts on how she helped you build. What business connections did she make? Oh, that's right. They were already there. Plus, when you started a lot of your stuff, you were still with your second wife. But you didn't give her credit, which, and to be honest, you shouldn't have. Because she didn't really help you build either. But you give Marjorie credit. One thing that Pink Book Lessons, which by the way, shout out to her. Because that's where I got a lot of the audio for the second part of this video. Um, shout out to her. Go check out her channel. Um, Pink Book Lessons. One thing she said, and I totally agree with her. Agree with her. Marjorie is smarter than you, man. She really is. And my own girlfriend, Nature Girl 30, another YouTuber, um, check her stuff out. She called it, called it. She said, the difference between her, Irvin, and Jada Pinkett Smith is that Jada Pinkett Smith is straight hood. She's pretty much hood. She just got fancy dresses and stuff, but she's pretty much a hood person. Marjorie is hood, but she has more of a hustler mentality in that there's two things she will protect. She will protect her name and she will protect her money at all costs. Right now, her name is tied to Steve and that brand means money. But if she ever can build up herself to where she can have her own thing, to where she can stand on her own and possibly her daughter Lori and her kids can stand up by themselves with that Harvey name, trust and believe. And I could be wrong about this, totally wrong. I think that woman will get the stepping. She will love him as long as that brand stands. But if that brand ever gets damaged to the point where it's not making no money, she ain't staying. She bouncing. Uh, that's just the feeling I got with her. And I think deep down, Steve Harvey knows this in my personal opinion. I mean, I think the, the gentleman knows this, but he's in denial about it. He don't want to believe it. And I understand that emotion because I've been there with, with some women too. But getting back to this, I listen to Steve and I hear the cries of a desperate man. And as much as I would like to make fun of him or go into your blood will be shed. I really can't, man. It's really sad. And for his sake, I hope she really is loyal as he claims. Because if a divorce ever comes, if a divorce does happen, trust and believe whoever she's got for lawyers will get this tape. We'll get not this video, but the vid audio that you heard. They will take that and use it against them to leverage how much money she gets. Even if Steve knows deep down she had very little to anything to do with her success. He said it out loud from his own mouth. And that will be used against you. And that can be used against you. So for your sake, Steve, she better be everything you claim that she is. Well, that's all I got to say on this edition of ATSBS. And if you don't know what that is, that simply means, ain't this some bull and you know the rest. I'm out. <laughs>